So my dear friends, um, my name is Pranahita, as uh, Dhruv mentioned, and um, I started my meditation in 2004. So uh, after coming into meditation, I realized that I started this meditation in so many lives. I did this meditation in so many lives. So after coming into meditation in this lifetime, I started getting so many experiences as Dhruv was just mentioning in the introduction. There are so many things that I experienced in my meditations. I did not read about them. I didn't know anything about them. But just because I'm a part of this moment, Pyramid Spiritual Society's movement, all the masters here, all the seniors, they helped me. Every moment, whenever I had any questions or anything, they were always there explaining what was happening to me or they were clearly showing me the path, what to do next. And on this occasion, I would like to thank and my deepest gratitudes to our Guruji who has founded this Pyramid Spiritual Society's movement, Ramarshi Pita Mahapatriji, thanks to him. So uh, in my meditation, sorry, just uh, the wonderful song, uh, Parnika, that was so amazing. It was very, very nice. So, and uh, yeah, in my meditations, um, as I started, I got connected to astral masters and I used to get so many astral experiences. Initially, I never believed them. So usually I just give this introduction so that whoever joined these meditations recently or whoever has started these meditations, they'll understand how a practitioner will go through. I mean, there are different types of persons. Everyone is unique and everyone will get unique experiences in their meditations. And some people may not get any experiences, but that's absolutely fine. Whatever that is happening in your meditation, just accept it. That is very, very important, my dear friends. Some people may have so many experiences, astral experiences, but for some people, they may just see a difference in their physical life, maybe in their health or financial situations or relationships. So whatever that is happening in meditation, just accept it and trust the process. Some people may just start for stress, but in my life, I just started like a game. My brother introduced meditation to me, my brother Prabodh Achyut, thanks to him too. So I used to get so many experiences, even auto writing in my, one of my meditations, I was just sitting and I'm getting these messages. My hand was, uh, there was a tingling sensation in my fingers and I got a message to start writing. So in that way, auto writing started to me and so many astral masters, Mahavtar Babaji, Annamacharya, Oneness Masters, Peace Masters, and so many masters, they gave amazing messages in auto writing. And then light language channeling started. So, and then light language drawings in the middle of a night, I just used to wake up and I used to draw. So, even I experimented with those light language drawings. And so many such things were happening in my life. And uh, one day in London, because uh, as many of you know, I live in London. Of course, currently I'm in India, but I live in London. So in 2012, in the middle of a night, angels started talking to me. So that's again a different phase. So oh, there were so many transformational experiences with angels, astral masters, and auto writing messages, the light language channelings, so many other things. But I would like to tell to everyone, do not stick to any of these experiences. They'll come into your life and they'll go. Whenever you need help, you can ask for help from astral masters, from angels but it's all about realizing that life is a drama. As Shakespeare said, life is a drama. 
it is a stage and we are all mere actors so today's topic is control dramas if life is a drama what are these control dramas uh before going into control dramas i'll just let you know how i got connected to this subject uh, in around 2007 as far as i remember it was in 2007 usually for everything i ask universe for signals even in your life whenever you are seeing something again and again and again it may be a signal from the universe telling you to have a look at that it may be a book or it may be anything whatever it is in the same way in 2007 my brother was having a conversation with one of his friends and i just overheard the word the celestine prophecy it's a book name the celestine prophecy many of you may be aware of it but for people who are not aware of it it's a book written by james redfield in 1993 so it's an amazing book so i just overheard that conversation and um, just within a couple of days i went to a, a meditator's house after finishing a meditation class so from the angle where i was sitting i could very clearly see the celestine prophecy book yeah just before that in the meditation class also someone was talking about the celestine prophecy and immediately after going to her house i saw the celestian prophecy book and i was just thinking oh this is the third time i'm hearing this word or seeing this uh, uh, celestian prophecy book in the last 3 days that was two times i heard and this is the third time that i'm directly seeing the book so i just checked with her if i can borrow that book and within one and a half days i finished that book so i uh, it is so amazing there are beautiful concepts in that book and one of the concepts that i really love is control dramas because it is very much important in our day to day lives it's not about a big subject or anything or something spiritual subject and it's not just for meditators but it is for everyone a layman to understand how they behave in their lives every day to day life how we are behaving with others and how others are behaving with us and how we are falling into the trap into those dramas so what are these control dramas i'll just uh, read out the definition so control dramas are unconscious strategies all people use to gain power or energy from another person and to essentially get their way with others we get our way with others by making them pay attention to us and then elicit a certain reaction from them to make ourselves feel fulfilled the positive feelings we gain are one at the expense of the other person and this often causes imbalance and drama in our interpersonal relationships so my dear friends control dramas there are four different types of control dramas most of the time we have one dominant control drama and as i am talking i want you all to contemplate how you behave in your life or how your partner or your parents or your boss any of your relationships how are they behaving just observe because all these years we don't even know that we are in these control dramas but once we are aware once we acknowledge them it will be easy for us to come out of that when we have that awareness so let us know more about these control dramas and 
as I mentioned, as I am talking, if required, just make a note of it physically or on a note, notepad or even mentally or even on your digital book. So in which control drama that you act? Because as I mentioned, everyone of us will be in one dominant control drama. And also sometimes we may be in one of the control dramas with one person and another control drama with another person. If you observe, sometimes we behave in a certain way with our father, in a certain way with our mother, or in a certain way with our boss, in a certain way with a friend. So we, our behavior changes with every person. Is that happening? Just observe very keenly so that we'll understand how are we behaving with different people? And why are we behaving like that? So most of the times we don't even realize what we are doing and to what extent and expense that we are doing. We'll always try to defend ourselves most of the times. And uh, uh, sometimes we give the, those defensive responses. Automatically we'll be giving those defensive responses because something will be going on in our mind and immediately we react to whatever the other person says or we'll be coming from the, their past. They might be saying something, but we will be hearing something else or we will be adding something else from the past. Oh, she always says that, or he always does that. But in this moment, they might have told only a particular sentence, but we'll be adding all those past. And based on that, we react. But when you start to become aware of whatever dramas that you're playing and can recognize it in action. It may not be easy on day one, but as you practice and practice, it will become a part of your life. Are we really reacting or are we giving the response? And in which control drama are we in? So when once we recognize we can make better choices, in our responses to others. Because my dear friends, only our response, it will define our relationship with anyone, even with ourselves sometimes. How are we responding to our emotions? Are we really acknowledging them? Most of the times what happens is we don't even acknowledge our own emotions. We'll just try to run away. For example, sometimes if we are sad, instead of acknowledging that sadness, we'll just go and eat a chocolate or eat some chips or do something else, go on a ride. But it is very important to address that emotion. It's okay to accept that you're feeling sad and it's okay to cry if you are feeling like crying, but do not suppress those emotions. Do not run away from them. That is very, very important. Or else they'll be stuck in your energy system if you're not addressing them. And every time if you're suppressing them, it will be suppressed into your energy body. And in the years to come, it will slowly move on to the physical body. That is what is called psychosomatic diseases. So that's very, very important. So um, as we'll talk about the control dramas, most of you might already be quite familiar with them because you have been exposed to a variety of people throughout your life. And you might have already uh, tested each of them, each of these control dramas. You might have already observed all these control dramas with different persons or even with yourself. But as we talk today, just become aware of your control drama and others' control dramas. And when others are falling into those control dramas, how are you behaving? And when you are falling into that control drama, how are the others behaving? 
just observe because this is all a power game it is all like an energy game so uh the first one is intimidator intimidator is someone who always yells and shouts a little bit more aggressive in any situation instead of talking nicely they'll just shout and yell sometimes it may be one of your parents <clears throat> usually in most of the cases both of the partners may not be like this but one of the partner may be like this of course in some cases there may be both the partners may be like that so or even some of the teachers or some of your boss boss or or anyone or sometimes even the kids when they don't know how to react they may just shout because they are not really able to address their underlying emotion but as parents you have to observe when they are shouting why are they shouting what is the underlying emotion that they are not able to address that they are not able to express clearly that is why they are shouting there may be some fear inside there may be some sadness some anger some irritation but instead of addressing those underlying emotions they may be just shouting in the same way it's not just about kids it's for everyone whoever is going into these control dramas instead of actually addressing the underlying emotion they will just fall into this control dramas and they'll express themselves in these control dramas so um if <clears throat> if your parents were intimidators for example if one of your parents were intimidator automatically you may become intimidator or you may become aloof i'll talk about aloof also so sometimes when the other person is shouting and you don't know how to react you may just go into another room it's like avoiding the situation no i don't know how to address when he is shouting or when she is shouting and they'll just go into another room without even talking anything without even answering they'll just go and shut the door it might have happened in your lives too you might be one of those persons or your partner might be one of those persons this is called aloof instead of actually handling the situation they'll just avoid run away sometimes they may be telling that why to have an argument unnecessarily let me just leave the place anyways even if i give any explanation or anything the other person will not listen to me so let me just better go away but is that where you are coming from or do you do that every time not only with the persons who are really yelling at you but are you really running away from all the tasks that you have to do all the goals that you have to achieve every time you are just avoiding and running away from something because you don't actually know how to handle it that is the underlying emotion that i don't know what to do instead of addressing i don't know you will just avoid you will just say that oh this job really sucks so i don't want to work here anymore and you just come out of that job or every time in your life i don't want to study this i don't want to do this i don't know every time these things are repeating again and again and again please i want you all to consciously observe why are you running and what are you running from when you actually observe yourself then you will understand very clearly that it is the emotion that is there inside you that you are running from you are not really addressing that emotion 
when you're not really addressing that emotion, automatically you feel like running away. So that is aloof. And the next one is interrogator. Interrogator is like uh, uh, people who always ask questions, like too many questions constantly for everything and anything, anything and everything they can ask questions. Even the silliest things or even the you know, if wife went out for some time, husband might be asking, where did you go? Why did you go? And why did it take so long for you? It was just shopping for groceries. Why did it take so long? And why did you spend so much money? And why did you buy this? Why did you buy two kgs of tomatoes? One kg is enough. Or why did you buy these small tomatoes? It may be even wife or husband, whoever it may be. Just think, are you the person who asked these questions? Or are you a partner? An interrogator who asks continuously so many questions. If one day he comes late from the office, if it is, it is absolutely fine if you just casually ask what happened at your office and these questions, but are you asking continuously, unconsciously, so many questions? And automatically you feel like asking or you, or you ask to everyone. Some people may just say that, oh, it's my curiosity. I just feel like uh, knowing more about people. Is it that, or is it that you need attention? Most of the times what happens, my dear friends, we become interrogators when we did not get enough attention in the childhood. When the other, when one of the parents were aloof and they were not at all giving you attention. For example, if the father works outside and once, comes once in a week, and not really addressing the child and not really giving any attention. The father's behavior is like that. For example, he doesn't really know how to uh, give affection to kids or he doesn't really know how to talk with kids. Then the kids really want that attention. So the kids start asking questions and it is normal for kids to ask questions at a certain age, but if it is continuing, Every time if they're asking continuously so many questions, then it may be that they need some attention from you. Spend some quality time. And also all the adults here, please observe what control drama that you are in and what control dramas that your parents were in. And please do not judge here. We're all humans and humans have emotions. And we are not here to judge them or wrong them. We're just here to understand the human behavior. And can we change it by learning more and becoming aware? So if you're noting down, just note down your control drama, the dominant control drama that you always are in at the same time Make a note of your parents' control dramas and think about what were you doing as a child or how were you behaving as a child when your parents were behaving in, in a certain way? How were you behaving? Because most of the times, as I mentioned, if an intimidator parent is there, the child may become intimidator. Because for example, if the uh, father comes and is shouting every day at the, at the child, for some days, he may become aloof. He don't know what to do. He may just uh, uh, go inside and shut down the door. Or some after some days, he may start talking back and he may start behaving like an intimidator. So it's not that every kid will become like this. But if two kids are there, one may become intimidator, one may become aloof. But most of the times we are all in one of one or the other control dramas. 
in one or the other point of time in our lives. So that is about intimidator and aloof and interrogator. And the last and most important thing is the poor me. This control drama involves um, a person always projecting himself or herself as someone who is helpless. And uh, they'll behave as if they always need that constant care and attention. They always complain about their life. I'm sure there must be one, at least one person in your life like that. Or even you may be one of those persons, but that's okay. First of all, whoever you are, whatever the way that you are behaving, that's okay. Once we accept it, we can transform. But don't try to defend yourself. It's okay because we are all humans. And it is a learning that we are, we are knowing all these things so that we can come out of these things. So the poor me, he, they always want some pity, pity from their parents, from their partners or from their friends. Every time they act as if they're so vulnerable they act in that way so as to trigger the pity from the other person. They don't even know. They are not doing it consciously. But if you show pity on them, it will not help them or help you. Because pity is not a good energy. Pity is not a positive energy. Pity is a non-positive energy. It will not serve the other person. It will not serve you always have compassion towards others. Is there anything that you can do? Just try to talk to them and try to give them a solution. But most of the times they don't want your solution. They just want to dump everything onto you. Unconsciously, my dear friends, it may not be conscious, but they'll be doing this unconsciously because they don't know how to address their underlying emotion. They think that life is all uh, like this. I mean, my life is so um, stinky or my life is all lemons or, I mean, they always complain about life. Whatever they have, how much ever they have, even if their relationships are good, even if they are financially abundant, whatever is there, they'll always find some reason to complain. And slowly what happens is even for some people, the life may be like that because they're always using those words that my life is like this. No one really takes care of me. So every time they're using these words again and again and again, they're attracting the same things into their life. So their life will become like a poor me. So if you are one of them, please, my dear friends, recognize it and right away start changing it. So how do we have to change it? Now we understand that we may fall into all these types of uh, control dramas. Then how are we going to change them? So for example, if you are in the uh, poor me, so most of the time they like being sad and miserable. Yes, my dear friends, they like it. They always want to be like that in a sad state, in a miserable state. They may not agree with this statement, but subconsciously they love that. For example, uh, if they are having any financial problems, if someone comes to them and wants to help them or wants to give a clear solution to them or even offers a job to them, they may not even take it because subconsciously, once they take it, what happens? They will come out of that poor me and they don't know how else to live. They don't know how to live happily. And, and you may even observe some people they don't like to be around joy. 
and they resent others' happiness. Yes. I'm, I'm not saying judge them or just be away from them. No, they are also humans. It's just that unconsciously they are in this behavior. If everyone is happy, they cannot stand that. And even sometimes what happens is they try to do something in between relationships. Like most, some people may say that, oh, my mother or my mother-in-law, she always tells something to my husband and my husband comes and fights with me. So sometimes those people are seeking attention and they're going into these poor me states. It's just that they need that attention, they need that energy. And they enjoy mourning. <laughs> they, love, they always love to tell to others about their suffering. As nobody suffers more or as much as poor me. It, they always feel like things aren't fair and everything stings. It feels like too much is laid on their shoulders or they may feel like they are having too many burdens and not enough care is given to them. Often they feel alone in turmoil. They become angry, irritable. And when someone comes around, they just want to tell everything or complain everything. So even if we offer words of encouragement, even if we offer solutions, as I mentioned before, they may not come out of it. But the only thing is acknowledgement. Acknowledge. If they are feeling sad and if they're complaining, just acknowledge them. Oh, are you feeling sad? And that disappears this, their concern because once they feel like the opposite person is understanding them, they're like, okay, because they just want that attention. They don't want any solutions. That is about poor me. And if you are poor me, my dear friends, please, please make a note, a post-it notes, or for that matter, any control drama. If you have recognized by now in which control drama are you in, in your bedroom or in your living room, on your laptop, wherever you spend more time, just stick a note with your control drama on. And if both the partners are here attending this session, please discuss very openly because if um, family members are together in this, if they can recognize these control dramas, they'll be able to help each other. So automatically when you stick those in your house, just for a few days, so that it will remind you again and again, how are you behaving? Is there any better way that I can behave? I can respond instead of reaction? So it will be reminding you again and again. And if family members are together in this, the other person can remind them. For example, uh, if two partners are there and uh, if one is an interrogator, uh, if, for example, if a husband is an interrogator, so he, the wife went out for shopping, as I was just mentioning. So she went for grocery shopping and um, uh, she bought different things. And uh, along with that, she bought some snacks. And after coming home, the husband started asking so many questions. Like, why did it take you so long? And were there so many people? Uh, is there a long queue in the supermarket? Oh, why did you bring these snacks? We already have so many snacks. And why did you buy this? Why did you buy that? And what happened? And whatever that comes to them. And you are spending too much these days. You're spending too much on your makeup. Or whatever it is, if they are an interrogator, just observe. 
and acknowledge them. Most of the times what happens is if the wife is an aloof, then automatically instead of answering husband's questions, she'll just go away. Even the opposite may happen. Most of the times, a lot of women say that their husbands are aloof because once husbands come home, a woman expects him to talk. Most of the times, if she's a housewife or, or whoever it may be, even if she's a working professional, she needs some time, some attention from the partner or even from kids. So for that attention, she may be asking so many questions, but please understand her. She just needs some attention, some love and affection. If you give that, she'll not be asking all these questions, whoever it may be, a husband or a wife or whoever it may be. If they're constantly asking too many questions, just tell to them, it's okay, my love. I just got these things. That's okay, don't worry. Just hug them and show some love and affection and automatically everything will disappear because the questions are coming from a deep down where they need some attention. Always remember whenever the opposite person is behaving in any of these ways, the intimidator, they're shouting, yelling, or suddenly they went inside some people are like, no, I don't want to eat with the family. I'll just eat later. That means they are avoiding it. They are avoiding. They don't want to socialize. Or it may even be that once they sit at the dining table with everyone, everyone will be giving attention to sister only. They don't give me any attention. So better I eat later. So all these things, so many things will be going on. So understand the underlying emotion. If you are a parent, observe these things in your child at a young age and tell to them, as a family work on all these things and take responsibility for your feeling. It's not that we have to push the feelings on other people. Because um, most of the times what happens is, uh, for example, um, two different persons are there with two different control dramas. As James Redfield says, it is about uh, stealing the energy because they don't have enough energy. So one person is having a little energy and the other person is also having a little energy. So once something happens, some argument, for example, if uh, a wife, made some uh, dishes and the husband did not really like it or the salt is more. And suddenly after a tiring day, he comes home and is so hungry. So just by looking at the dish, she was like, wow, I really love this. And the wife serves and he just takes a bite and it is full of salt. Immediately his reaction mode comes. He may be shouting if he's an intimidator. He will shout. What happens when he's shouting, automatically the wife will feel bad. Oh, I spent so much time. Yet he's not understanding. It's just a little bit of salt. He can still eat it. He, she may feel like that. But once he starts shouting, automatically she will lose that energy. What happened? This energy, he has taken it. And she may go into this aloof drama. She may be like, okay, uh, anyways, he'll not, not listen to me. Let me just go into another room and shut myself. So she just goes there. And slowly what happens, he will feel bad because he, he has hurted her wife. So again, his energy goes to her. It's all about those energy games. We don't know. Consciously, we may not be knowing, but the only solution is we have to increase our energy. If our cups are full, we don't feel like taking the energy from others. For example, if the husband is not tired, 
if he's happily resting or if he's on a holiday or if they are on a honeymoon, then the whole thing will be in a different way. The reaction will be in a different way. The mental state, in which mental state they are, that matters. So every day meditation, it will give us more energy. Always our cups will be full when we are in meditation. So always, whenever possible, try to try not to empty your cup and always pour in that energy, take in that energy from the cosmos. Even if you have one minute or five minutes, do not think that I have to sit in meditation for one hour and I don't have that one hour time. Start with one minute meditations. A lot of CEOs and so many celebrities, they do one minute meditations too when they don't have time. But it's always good to take some time. But even during a busy day, do those one minute meditations. That's very, very important, my dear friends. So this is all about control dramas. And uh, we will just, I'll just take a couple of uh, uh, questions or shares before we start meditation, just for a couple of minutes, and then we'll start the meditation. I'm just seeing in the chat. So happy to see you here, madam. It's like a dream come true. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, if anyone has anything, you can raise your hand. We'll just take a couple of sharings or any questions because a lot of people may be having some questions with the control dramas. And then we'll start with the full moon guided meditation. Can you tell me once again from which book you are telling? Uh, it is The Celestine Prophecy. Oh, I think uh, Devi Chakagaro has already shared it here. It's by James Red Redfield. Hello, ma'am. Ma yeah. Actually, as Actually, you told, uh, we are observing yeah. the things, what is happening around us. But constantly, if it is happening, means we should, uh, in, uh, like, we should uh, overcome ourselves. Yeah? Uh, if ourselves, it is, right? yes. If it is constantly happening again and again, start observing and uh, start taking responsibility because everything that is happening outside of us is a reflection of something that is there inside of us that we have not addressed. So in the previous example, uh, if the wife is an aloof, it could be, as I mentioned, if their parents did not give attention to them or if their parents were interrogators or intimidators, she might have become the, that aloof. So address that underlying issue. It's not just about addressing the opposite person's issue, but first, when you address your issue, because it is something that is there inside you, which is not completely healed. So when it is not completely healed, when the opposite person says something, that will trigger that unhealed wound. So once you start healing that wound completely, then your response will change. And automatically, once you change inside, opposite person automatically changes. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, we should observe and uh, uh, we should not uh, respond to the other persons. Uh, as you have used the word, we should not respond to the other persons. Are you an aloof? Because Means, even uh, you used to shout, uh, got frustrated in, in, in the period of 15 to 20 days once. Mm -hmm. uh, like, to be frank, I, it will be happening automatically. I don't, yes. I thought I'll be in, a, in the state of awareness. But it is, uh, I'm collecting all the things which are shouted on me from the household, oh, from the family. Exactly. But I'm receiving. I'm... Yeah. yeah, I'll just uh, tell you. So what happens is, uh, for example, if your partner is shouting now in this moment, automatically you'll remember 
all the things that your parents shouted at you, your friends or your boss or whoever shouted at you, everything from the past. And the reaction that you give to your husband is based on the whole of that unhealed past. Not just what happened in this moment, but what happened in your life. So many people shouting at you. It's like, oh, my life is like this. Everyone shouts at me. And you're so frustrated, so irritated, and you shout back with so much intense that the whole past, you're shouting not just on your husband, but you're shouting on all of them who were intimidators before, who shouted at you before. So my dear friends, it's not just about her. I really appreciate you coming forward and asking this question. So many people will be in such situations, but they, 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 but they may not come forward and ask all these questions. So I appreciate your courage. So the main thing is in meditations, address all those unhealed past. Do not suppress those, come on to the surface. Just let them come on to the surface and release them. Forgive every person. And whatever that is happening in your life right now, only look at that instead of attaching the past automatically. Um, a lot of uh, men complain that their wives or their mothers or the women in their life, they always remember everything from their past, from the day they got married. Even if some argument happens, they'll just talk about everything that happened from past 10 years. <laughs> so of course, it, that's okay. I'm not complaining anything about a woman. It is absolutely fine, but it is the time to change now. That's important, my dear friends. Once we become aware, it's always about working on those unhealed past and releasing them, forgiving them time by time. If it is coming again, work on that particular situation, forgive that because it is stored in your cellular memory. So it will automatically come unconsciously. Once you release from the cellular memories, you'll be able to release it completely. So you have to work on that in your meditations. Think about it and start doing meditation for you, that person. Yeah. Ma'am, actually, can I speak in Telugu? Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Uh, if no one has anything, we can take another question and okay. we may have to. Ramya, as well. yes, Ramya got waiting to ask one more question. She raised okay. it. Sure, yeah. Namaste, Andy. Um, Namaste. I just I just had a small question which I wanted to check with you. Um, sure. I have frequently like bad dreams when I sleep. Like I either wake up tired or I end up with a headache in the mornings. Um, in the past, I used to take a lot of stress. But from the past one year, I've been pretty much content, just grateful for what I have. But I'm not able to get out of this dreams uh, issue I have. Um, mm -hmm. Because of this 41 day challenge, I've been doing meditation for like two weeks now. So I'm still okay. new, but I just okay. want to check if there's any advice you can give to me. Okay. So while uh, just before sleeping, if you have anything that is there from morning till evening that day, any stress or anything that you're carrying into your sleep, just release that and do meditation accept whatever that has happened during the day. Sometimes there may be so many questions and uh, you may not be able to accept, but if that is there, then tell them that. I mean, it's just like a, every thought is like a baby. Mm -hmm. So talk with the thought. Okay, it's okay, I'll address you tomorrow. Or if required, note them down. Sure. But don't keep them in your mind so that you're taking them into your dreams and you're feeling stressed about it. Most of the times because of stress, it may be coming. That you, oh, I have to handle this. I have to handle that. I have to do this tomorrow. If you put it on a paper, I'm like, it will be like, okay, everything is there on the paper. I can check it tomorrow. I don't have to keep it in my mind, everything. So in that way, you can keep it, right? But definitely do some meditation and listen to some peaceful music. For a few days, just use some uh, healing ragas or Mozart or any beautiful music that you really get connected to mm -hmm. and play that before you sleep or during you during your sleep try that sure okay. sure Andy. thank you so much thank you
Kalpana, uh, Arya, do you want to ask any question? Devi Garu, do we have uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes? Uh, we have 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay, let's start our meditation. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, sorry, do we have any other question or uh, can I start? Yeah, I have one more lady unmute herself, but I asked her, she didn't get any response. She's Kalpana Rapol. Do you have any question, ma'am? It's okay. We'll continue with meditation. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, my dear friends, so it is full moon. So uh, let us- Yes, Dhruv? Yeah, I don't have any questions. Before we start, I'd just like to say something. Um, yes, thank you for this wonderful lesson on um, controlled dramas. Um, I'm gonna restate some important points from this lesson. Yes. Controlled dramas are, are ways to steal energy from someone. Type, uh, the four types of controlled dramas are intimidator, aloof, interrogator and poor me and someone who has the intimidator in control drama is always um, take uh, taking situations like it's a big argument um, people who have the aloof control drama um, instead of ha handling a situa situation they avoid it completely interrogators are always asking too many questions and poor me is basically self-pity Perfect. Thanks. That's amazing, Drew. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, my dear friends. So let us start our meditation. Full moons are very, very powerful. So we have to utilize full moon energies whenever possible. So let us all sit in meditation. Just cross your legs. Clasp your hands as you're sitting in a comfortable posture. Close your eyes. If there are no thoughts in your mind, just be in that state. But if any thought arises in your mind, observe your natural, normal breath. Just observe how you're inhaling and how you're exhaling. If there are too many thoughts, just take a couple of deep breaths. And as you're breathing in, breathe in that prana, that energy. And while you're exhaling, just release all that tension, all those worries and stress, all those thoughts which are not serving you anymore. Forgetting about the past and forget about the future. Be in the present moment and breath can help you to come to the present moment. The full moon is said to heighten the activity of the mind, amplifying conscious thoughts as well as pulling subconscious ones to the surface. So for some people during full moons, there may be too many thoughts, but that's absolutely fine. because the full moon is a great time to release the unwanted things in your life. And even this is a time to acknowledge what you have achieved and what you're grateful for since the previous full moon. Meditations during full moon provides an opportunity to connect deeply with our inner wisdom, 
with our true nature. Full moon energies can awaken us, awaken our spiritual side, making it particularly beneficial to participate in a full moon meditation. There will be more energies during full moon, two days before and two days after also. And in these energies, we can heal ourselves completely, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever that is there. These full moon energies will completely cleanse you. So let those unwanted emotions, unwanted thoughts, unwanted situations come onto the surface, come onto the surface and let go whatever that is not serving you anymore, release them, release those toxic emotions that are harming you. Release those toxic relationships, situations. My dear friends, remember it is not releasing the person, but it is just releasing those toxic emotions. The shower of this full moon energies are cleansing you. Just imagine with all your senses what it would feel like if you're standing in the light of the full moon or even sitting or lying down and staring at the beautiful full moon and the sky full of stars. Breathe deeply, filling your lungs with that cool, crisp evening and with that air and as you're exhaling, exhale all those worries, stresses, tensions, everything melting down and you're relaxing deeper and deeper each and every cell of your body is completely relaxed and you're going into deeper and deeper relaxation while you're enjoying the shower of the full moon each and every cell of your body is receiving those full moon energies. And washing away everything that is not serving you anymore in your life. While you're relaxing, all this process is happening. Be aware, my dear friends, do not fall asleep. Be aware and observe this beautiful process. You can release anything that you want to release. In this beautiful energies. First, let us all release 
any health challenges, any illness, any toxic emotions, like anger, jealous, sadness, or even feelings like, I am not good enough, or like self-victimization, I am not capable, I am not worthy, Anything that we want to let go of us, anything that is weighing us down and we don't want to carry over next cycle because this full moons, the moon, it's a cycle. And as per this cycle, the energies on the earth planet varies and even our emotions mood swings, where is as per these energies. When the moon is at its fullest, our intentions are at their peak. And when the moon slowly starts to fade, it has the energy of being able to carry away anything we don't want to carry along with us. So just let it go. First, create that space inside you. When a room is full of furniture, we cannot put in new furniture. So when we are full of all those unwanted things, there will be no room for new ideas, for newness in our life. So first, let us release. Just a couple of minutes, reflect on everything that you want to release right now. And this full moon energies will help and guide you to release all of that. Each long, slow, deep breath in and out, taking you comfortably into deeper and deeper states of relaxation. Everything else is becoming unimportant and is fading into the background as you connect more and more with the energy of the full moon. My dear friends, feel your energy field beginning to expand with the inflow of 
more and more light, more and more energy from the full moon. Feel that conscious expansion. Just let go and relax in the glorious light of the full moon. You can even sweep your awareness from the top of the head to the tip of the toe once and observe if there is still any tension in your body because sometimes unknowingly we may be tightening some muscles in our stomach or chest or head or any part of our body. So just relax completely. Only in deeper relaxations, you'll be able to receive abundant energies. You're very safe. And you're completely guided and supported by full moons beautiful nurturing feminine energy as if you're sleeping in your mother's lap or as if you're resting in your mother's womb it's such a beautiful feeling You don't have to worry about anything. Everything will be taken care of by that universal mother. With that complete trust, just relax. You can breathe in that pure white light energy of the full moon. which is filling love into your very soul. Getting a sense now of every cell in your body being completely cleansed and purified. Just allow all non-positive energies to be washed away. this beautiful divine light of the full moon. Just feel that energy field around you. Some people may even see that. Some people may feel that. And if you're not able to feel or see, that's okay. Just keep observing your natural breath. Your energy field, your consciousness is expanding as it is filling with this divine white light. Experience your energy field, your consciousness, merging with the divine consciousness. Now feel this energy of the divine love, divine consciousness intensifying.
you may not even feel your body. You may lose awareness of your body, but that's okay. It is just your consciousness expanding and becoming one with the divine consciousness. Just feel that oneness. You realize your greatest power for the highest good of all from that oneness consciousness, from, from that space of light. Think about your purpose of life. Why did you come onto this planet Earth? Is it just about yourself? Or is there any higher purpose to serve the humanity? If so, in what ways can you serve the humanity? Just an open question. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to put your mind in that. Allow yourself to imagine the greatest power inside you. Under the light of this full moon, your energy is completely activated. And as the moon serves everyone on this planet Earth with its light, some days it may be full moon, some days it may be new moon. You may not be able to give everything to the humanity, but some hours, some time, some of your skills, like the moon, some days when possible, give your fullest. Some days, just spend some time to serve the humanity in whatever ways that are possible to you. Because my dear friends, we are not individual consciousness, we are all group consciousness. And we all can grow together. Only if we can help each other.
and so many thousands and millions of people across the globe do these full moon meditations and so many light workers in physical bodies or astrally activating energy portals of light and love and opening those divine doorways into that oneness. Let us thank all those light workers Let us feel gratitude to the nurturing love and light of full moon. And let us thank all the astral masters and all the angels and all the higher energies that are present here today in guiding and helping us. And most importantly, thank yourself, thank all our teachers, our Guruji, Matriji, take a couple of good deep breaths and feel yourself coming fully back into your physical body. Allow the energies of this divine light to continue to integrate within each and every cell of your body. Completely come back into your body and feel your body. Slowly move your fingers. And whenever you are ready, just release your hands. Do not open your eyes yet. Just release your hands and hug yourself once. Feel that gratitude to your body because it is the vehicle with which we are here on this planet Earth. We are having beautiful experiences on this planet Earth. So thank this body. Thank yourself for taking this time for yourself and choosing to be here instead of enjoying a party or in, instead of going somewhere on this weekend, but choosing to be here. So thank yourself. With that self-love and gratitude, which are the highest emotions. With that vibration, with that energy, whenever you're ready, you can place your hands on your eyes for a few seconds and slowly and gently 
you can open your eyes. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this short meditation.